Um, I'm really glad that you were all were able to make it this afternoon. I want to introduce myself. My name is Nikki Thrash. I work for Hartley House, and I also serve on the um, steering committee of, for the Nonprofit Alliance. And um, in that in that role, I also serve on the LFC Council. Um, and this year I'm co-chair of the Leaders on Loan program with Ashley Waters, who is also on the call. And, um, and Sarah Lynn is serving as the chairman of the Nonprofit Alliance. So that's who the three of us are. And you'll be hearing from us um, as we go here. I'll just kind of go over briefly what we're gonna cover. Um, we'll talk about what the Leaders on Loan concept is. We'll talk about the types of projects that, that are accepted and how you can get involved. Um, we'll also go through the application deadlines, the selection criteria, and the, the project timeline so you can understand how this project will fit into your year um, and when you could expect results to, to come back to you. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what makes a successful project and when a project may not be as successful. One of the things we found um, last year was this briefing was actually really helpful. So to kind of position what this is and help, help nonprofits understand how they can make the most of it. So that's really exciting. Um, the, the, I mentioned the Nonprofit Alliance, and I'm not sure if everybody on the call is aware of, of who we are. But basically, we're part of the Chamber of Commerce, and we're the, the group of nonprofits which, which make up in numbers a huge percentage of the membership of the Chamber. And we're, we get together to kind of just advocate for ourselves and each other. Um, the steering committee works on projects like this, um, our partnership with Leadership Frederick County, with the Leaders on Loan Program, with Health and Human Services Day, and, um, and other things like that. So that's who we are. Um, the, the concept of Leaders on Loan. So every year, um, th this has been going on for years, and Mary Ellen Mitchell could give us like the, the history of it because she kicked this off way back when. Um, and basically what we're trying to do is help the, help the nonprofits with some pro bono professional work from leaders and upcoming leaders who are participating in the Leadership Frederick County program. And we want that experience to be a, a great learning experience for LFC um, participants as they develop their leadership skills and, and talents. And we want it to be a meaningful experience for the nonprofit so that the product they get at the end is something that they really are gonna be able to use. So we, we want it to be good for everyone. Um, and that's, that's kind of the goal of it. A secondary goal, or maybe in my mind kind of primary is how important it is for for-profit organizations to understand where nonprofit organizations fit in our community and to understand that we are really all the same. We may, maybe has, have a different business model, um, but we're all businesses. And, um, and to, help, to help the class understand a little bit more about nonprofits will then help us with a pipeline of volunteers, of future board members, future committee members and leaders who in the community who can then work and advocate for our organizations. So that's kind of the, the big picture of the concept of Leaders on Loan. Um, and what we're gonna share with you today is basically lessons learned um, so that we can help you to create um, a successful project proposal. So with that, now I am going to pass it over to Ashley and she's gonna talk a little bit more about the types of projects that are accepted. 
Thanks, Nikki. Uh, so as you can see on the screen, there are five main topics um, or types of projects that can be submitted. I will say over the years, we tend to have some categories that are a little bit easier for folks to imagine. Um, but I encourage everyone on the call to take note of these various um, types and really think about where your organization could use some support. So you're gonna see technology support that could be website design, software training, other IT and social media like efforts, marketing development. This one is very, very common. You're gonna see um, event concept development, sponsorship materials, um, different types of surveys that could really help you in terms of your grant research, et cetera. Human resources, again, that's an area that not, not a lot of nonprofits have their own human resources department or official. And so there's a lot of potential in here in terms of, you know, employee handbook um, development, recruitment and retention plans, making sure we have good employment um, strategies to keep our, um, keep our workforce happy. Financial planning, this one could be a little bit overwhelming for some, but again, it is a potential if you would like to um, have support in you know, cash flow analysis or budget analysis. And then there's this innovator category. And so this could really be something if you're like, well, I have this idea, but it doesn't really fall into any of these categories. Um, hey, throw it out there. Um, if it meets some of the other best practices, we're happy to consider it. And the biggest thing is that it's helpful to you and your organization. So um, these are the five categories. And if you decide to apply, you will need to identify which of the categories it falls in. When we're selecting projects, we try to make sure we have a variety of projects. That way we're not offering all one type of project um, to the class. And so we encourage you guys to think about this, look at all five areas and decide which one would be best for you. Ashley, Jen, could, there be, could there be a crossover between those five? Oh, absolutely, yes, yes. Thank and you. some of them you very easily could see, yes, absolutely. Thank you. So today we're gonna to go through a lot of information, but the biggest thing is, so if this concept is intriguing to you, how do you get involved? Um, so to give a little understanding of that process, it is a competitive application. As you guys know, we have between 40 and 50 LFC class members. We wanna make sure there's enough people per project. Um, so we will be selecting um, projects that we think offer a good variety and meet the number of people in the class to provide a good experience both for you and for the, um, the LFC members that are gonna be involved. Um, you will, um, the LFC council members and nonprofit alliance members will go through your, your application. We're gonna talk about how that's gonna be reviewed in a second. And what we did last year, after you applied and if you were selected, um, many of you who were involved in the organization for a while, we used to pitch in person and nonprofits would come and pitch in person. We actually have moved that to a video. And so presentations and pitches will be recorded. They get to review those, watch all of them in their own time, rewatch them if they really want to soak up all the information and then submit their selections. So you're going to find that full application at um, frederickchamber.org slash leaders dash on dash dash loan. Um, we'll make sure that's in the follow up email from today. But just so everyone realizes it's an application, you're selected to be part of it. And then later afterwards is when you get your selected members. And that timeline Sarah is going to cover in full detail in a few slides. So what does the timeline look right now, though? So until before we get to the class part of it. So today, that's June 3rd. Yes, we're in June, right? Um, so that's today. Anyone who wants to be able to submit either needs to be present here today or will need to watch this recording to make sure they understand the project um, and the experience that we're hoping for. Your applications must be in by July 8th. So that's the Friday at the end of the week of the 4th of July is. Um, and it's an online application this year. So before it was a PDF, it's been converted to online. So hopefully that makes it a little bit easier to go through it instead of having to edit a PDF and, and mess with that. So you have until July 8th, which is just about a month. During that month, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. We're going to immediately that following week score all the applications and finalize our selected projects. So you'll know by a week later whether or not your project was selected. When we um, hit the next few dates, I would encourage you to mark your calendars now just so you have these times blocked off um, in case you guys are selected. 
The first is going to be on July 22nd. It's called a Crafting Your Pitch 101 free training that's done with Whitney Hahn from Digital Bard. Many of you know Whitney. Um, what this is intended to do is to help you with your video pitch to the classes. And so you get this awesome free training with Whitney um, that really will benefit you not only for this video, but really for how you're selling your story of your nonprofit long term. So please mark your calendars for July 22nd. Um, that pitch training will happen, and that is a requirement for all selected projects. There will be a second opportunity the following week on July 29th. Um, if you take what you learn on the 22nd, you're working your pitch and you want additional support from Whitney, that's one-on-one -on -one opportunities that will be happening on the 29th. So then you do take all the insights from those two meetings, um, and you will need to have your um, pitches back to um, Jen Gerlach at uh, the chamber by August 11th. So again, you have a few weeks there to get some help on your pitch, work on your pitch, record it, re-record it, make sure it's what you want it to be. And as long as it's in by the 11th, we are good to go on um, that. So that's kind of the process of applying your application being reviewed. And if you're selected, the most immediate things you need to be prepared for. So in that middle part, when we're reviewing the applications, what are we looking for? So we score it on what's in front of you right now. So first is just the project overall over, overview and goals. Um, are you able to present a concise project that is achievable during that time frame? Another big piece of it is um, the level of need within your organization and the impact this project would have on your mission and your work. And also, we want to see how the LFC class members will benefit from the project, because not only is it a support to the nonprofits, it's also a potential opportunity for our um, LFC class members to expand their skill sets, to shine, to grow as leaders. So that's very important as well. Um, we also want the projects to be sustainable and helpful. We don't want a project to come in and then sit on the shelf. And so we do try to see, will this be used to help make future decisions? Will it be sustained? Is it going to be helpful once the work is completed? And obviously what your capacity is to manage the volunteers. Um, any nonprofit knows that it's really great to have help, but our volunteers also take some work on our end. So we wanna make sure the nonprofits can support them, can be a partner in those projects and not really delay them. We wanna make sure that your nonprofit has that capacity. So that's a lot that goes into the application. That's a lot of what we're looking for. Um, and each question in the application will prompt you to tell us these to make it easier for you to shine and for us to evaluate it. So you shouldn't have to worry too much. We kind of prompt you to tell us these things. So um, I'm gonna pass it off now to Sarah, who's gonna talk about um, the overall timeline and kind of what you can do to make sure your project is um, falls in line with best practices. Sarah? Thank you. So the timeline, this is, you know, Ashley just went over the timeline for application, but this is actually the full project timeline. So if you think of a project that you would like done, you know, a month after you submit your application, this isn't the time, this isn't your thing. This is something that classes won't even, the class members won't even really see it until September, other than your pitch, and the work will not be finished until at least April. So, well, at, you know, by April. But it's not a short project timeline to get things done. So um, in September, class members do review the materials. Um, they pick their preference of project and then project selection happen happens at the opening retreat for the LFC class. Um, in October, um, the LOL teams uh, work with whatever representative from your organization and they create MOUs and agreements between the project team and the uh, nonprofit, just to make sure there are clear expectations of what is needed on both sides and to make sure that you both are comfortable that you can get this project delivered. Um, in November and December, project work is just starting and going on. I know I just recently, I just graduated from this most recent class and had a leaders on loan project for Habitat, which is where I work. So I saw it from both sides of it. And really the earlier folks can start working on their projects, the more likely you are gonna have a solid work done. Um, so, you know, working with your teams in November and December is great to really get them kicked off. January, there is a mid project check-in between the nonprofit and the project team. 
some of the nonprofits work more closely with their teams than others do. Um, there's a coach that goes along with the teams that kind of helps them along who's been through the process before too. So it, it, depending on your project, you may not be as heavily involved in every step of the process, but in January, there will definitely be a midpoint check-in and that's a great time to, to kind of realize are we really on track? Are we still headed for the right goals or did something shift and we need to realign? Um, February and March, basically the work continues. Um, a lot of times February and March are when the most gets done because projects are kind of wrapping up um, and starting to really come together with the deliverables. So you may hear from your teams more in February and March than you have the rest of the time. April is when it wraps up. Um, the team wraps up the project, they finalize their deliverables and they present to your nonprofit um, with what they have brought. So like, for example, it depends on what your project is, but with the Leaders on Loan team that presented to Habitat, they presented to me and they presented to our executive committee of the board so that everybody was kind of on the same page with what our project was and what the results were. And I'll tell you, it was a good project. I'll get to that in the next couple of slides. But um, and then in May, the teams report out their project to their LFC classmates. And so this is not something that you need to be there for, but just know that they will also be reporting. So it's actually a nice other chance for the rest of the class to see the great work that was hopefully done and kind of, you know, highlight your nonprofit to the entire class, not just to your leaders on loan team. So next we're going to talk about what makes a successful project? So as I said, I just graduated from this most recent LFC class. So I was uh, in a Leaders on Loan project. I was actually on Ashley's project for the Rotary Club of Carroll Creek. Um, so really what makes a most successful project is having those clear deliverables and making it a project that has a beginning and an end point. If it's vague, it's not gonna work. It has to be a very clear project with a beginning and an end and something to deliver. Um, it's, it almost seems like the simpler of the projects, the better, but a lot of times we all know working in nonprofits, the simple projects are the ones that get put to the bottom of the to-do list because you know that they can get done eventually, but it's also a great project to have outside people look at and see, maybe you'll get some fresh ideas because you've been working on it or looking at it for so long or haven't had time to look at it, that this puts fresh eyeballs on it and really gets you outside leaders to help out with this project and learn more about your organization and who you serve. Um, so an example of a couple of projects from this year that I know were very successful was, I mean, I can speak um, from the Habitat project. We had our Leaders on Loan team do a digital audit of our website um, our website is terrible and it needs definitely to be redone. So having the team take an outside look at it, they really went through and made, they, what they delivered to me was like three pages of um, suggestions for what specifically to watch out for, examples of other websites that we could mimic ours after, specific you know, points of what they did. And then they also gave us three quotes from local vendors to redo our website. So, I mean, literally it was a plug and play website. I just took that and plugged it into my budget for next year. And that's what we're gonna start working on. Um, and some other ones, I mean, for the, Ashley, if you can speak a little to the Rotary Club, I hope you thought it was successful because that was my program. But um, that was another one that had very clear deliverables and was a great example. Absolutely. So our project was to help find technical um, and technological solutions to help communication for our, our large organization. And so what we really needed help with was just doing the research um, and coming to the table with a variety of options for us to consider. Um, the LOL team was able to survey our membership. So they garnered information. I didn't have to worry about it. I reviewed the survey and said, yes, no, let's tweak this a little bit. But they created a lot of it. And it's just work as an all volunteer organization that was really hard for us to undertake, but we knew the value of it. And so I think our project, because it was in that technology area, was a little bit unique for some um, and allowed people to really feel like they were able to do the research, gave us some suggestions, gave us their recommendations, in which I was then able to take that to my board and we're continuing the discussion about what our next steps would be. So I think, again, a lot of LOL projects 
uh, it's hard to really narrow it down, but it was nice to have that concrete deliverable like Sarah was talking about that I could immediately take and put into action um, instead of having something that was more obtuse. So I think the definitive project aspect was very, very helpful in our case. Another successful one that we had this year was a very small organization who needed a strategic plan. And it was the first time they'd ever had a strategic plan. They're a very new organization. And I will tell you, that was a hot issue for our, um, our class. I think like so much of our class put that as like a number one thing they wanted to work on. So that was a competitive one <laughs> for the class to choose from. Um, another part that makes, I think, a successful project is the fact of making sure you get to that pitch class and you really make your pitch as succinct and clear as possible. That just starting off in that way, having it be, I didn't ever do it where it was the live pitch, but having it be a video pitch just gave, it felt like I had more flexibility in how I shared the project with the folks that were potentially gonna work on it. And I think that that helped, again, set clear expectations for what the feel, the look and feel of your organization what that might look like to work with you and how your projects are going to go along. Mm -hmm. But now let's also talk about some unsuccessful projects. <laughs> so uh, we kind of alluded to this, but if you have a big, vague project, it's not going to work. This is not the, the scene for you. If you're going into this really unsure about something that's very specific, it, it's just not the project for you. We did have one group this year who, the, although the organization they did enjoy working with them and did get some good deliverables out of it, it's gonna be something that sits on a shelf because it's not something that they could immediately use or work through. And the Leaders on Loan team that worked on it really didn't feel like they were being successful because the project kept changing, things kept adjusting, their deliverables, the whole thing was very different from the beginning than it was from the end. So you have to make sure to, again, be very clear on what you want. Also, if it's too large of a project, it is not gonna be successful. If you're trying to build an entirely new program, that is not for this program. Um, but this really is, you know, the smaller, more direct and simple project that is something that will definitely benefit you in real time is definitely the best way to go for this. Can I also add, Sarah, that um, something else that that makes a project less successful is a hands off approach from the nonprofit. So if you decide that you're going to apply for a leaders on loan project, the most one of the most important things you can do besides clearly defining the project is to make sure if it's not you, that someone in the organization is the point person, is responsible to keep up that relationship because communication between the, the group and the nonprofit is critical, obviously. I mean, it's kind of a no brainer, but it's been, we've seen over and over again that that's the, that's the stumbling block is, and, and again, we're all really busy and we're all short staffed and we do the best we can. So this is another piece that you need to remember will be a responsibility of yours is if you're going to seek the help, then you need to invest a little bit of time to stay engaged in it through the process. So I think that's another really important part. I think that's great. So moving on back to Nikki. <laughs> Sorry. Questions and okay. answers. So anyone have any questions? Um, I know we just threw a lot of information out pretty quickly. What do you think? Questions? I've got a quick question. Yes. Um, well, maybe quick. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm on the board with a nonprofit called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. Mm -hmm. um, and some of you, I think, have heard of, uh, heard of what we do. We build beds for kids in need in the county. Um, we have two, I would say, very big needs, and I'm curious your thoughts on if this project would be helpful for them. Number one is uh, uh, we need some social media help. We just need some kind of direction and um, someone who'd be willing to sit down and, and help with some, you know, some older folks who aren't, aren't very 
you know, tech savvy or social media savvy. And then another is um, um, fun, uh, like sponsorships, fundraising. Um, we, we, we're not great at that. We don't do a whole lot of that. And we need some direction on um, someone who could, you know, help with fundraising goals or, or you know, something of that sort. Um, do you think that's something that would be beneficial for this program? So those are both really good ideas, good projects for these classes. Um, and so what what I'd encourage, first of all, when it comes to fundraising, the the leaders on loan folks, the LFC class will not do fundraising for you. Um, and that's that's not part of their kind of directive. What they can do is help to design a fundraising program, help to design right. a fundraising event, give you guidance um, around policies or that sort of thing, they're, but yeah. they're not going to go ask someone to be a sponsor. Um, right. Social media help, absolutely, absolutely. There's going to be folks who that's their strength or, um, you know, that have a lot to offer in that. So, you know, whether it's if you have a presence and you want someone to look at the presence and give you feedback and help you build on that, or um, if it's that you're not in the game and you want to get in the game, what does it look like? How do you do it? I, I think I, I think that um, Sarah and Ashley, what do you guys agree with that? That those seem like really doable projects. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I think that Nikki, you, you were headed in the right direction with it of like, they can't, they're not gonna do the social media for you and they're not gonna do the fundraising for you, but they can definitely help you create a good like marketing or development plan so that it gives you clear direction that your team can then have or your volunteers or whomever to be able to be like, oh, this is what I have to do step by step. And yeah. something like that would be super and, helpful. And what does that somewhat look like? I mean, is that like a monthly Zoom call for an hour where we discuss where we're at and where we wanna go? And, you know, and then the leaders on loan come back with ideas the following week or month? So, so I think that I think that it would look like is that this is this is a project that the class is going to do or that this group is going to do. So the first thing is when you put your pitch together, you're going to you're going to make the pitch for what you want to have in the end. OK, but then this group of professionals is going to decide how they're going to get to that end. So they may decide they want to have weekly or monthly calls with you. They may decide they want to interview you and some of the other volunteers. They may decide that it, it depends, but the group is going to decide how they want to attack the project. And then what your role is to be ready to cooperate and, and with them as they need. Does that, does that make sense? Very much. Yeah. Okay. One last question. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if I'm, in this year's class of, of leader, um, leadership class and want to also do a pitch? Can I do both? <laughs> so what I did last year was that I had a board member do the pitch and be the main point of contact for the Habitat project. Since okay. I was in the class and doing my own Leaders on Loan project, but of course I was there as a resource. So if they needed direct marketing things or whatever from the access to the website, things like that, they could they knew that they could talk to me and I could work with them on that but I was not the main point of contact for the leaders on loan project and I did not do the pitch okay great thank you I did coach the pitch but I didn't do the pitch <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it other questions I was going to ask how long the pitch videos are now is there a time limit they are, um, per Whitney's suggestion, she would, last time she suggested two to four minutes. I think my pitch ended up coming at like a minute and a half. I went for brevity versus longer, but my project was a little bit easier to explain shorter. So two to four minutes tops. Well, Whitney will talk about that based on your organization, what you're pitching. Um, if it's a well-known organization, sometimes it's a little bit shorter to explain that part versus like the umbrella project. A lot of people didn't know about that organization, so they needed to explain a little bit more before they could get into the project. So two to four minutes, and that's what that meeting is meant to do with Whitney, is to help you get the most out of those two to four minutes, um, because the class is going to be watching, again, numerous projects. So we want to make sure they can also sit and watch them and don't feel like they're skipping through if they get too long. 
And, and also for that reason, we, um, we ask that when you do the application, we don't need any additional materials. So we don't need to receive brochures or um, any other materials, just the questions on the application and what we're gonna use to score the project. Ingo, you had your hand raised. Yeah, it's kind of, um, the time has kind of passed, but I just wanted to thank you for uh, your Q&A slide had pictures of my class and it was the best class ever. Just wanted to say that, 2018. <clears throat> I was gonna say, it's nice to see so many alumni of the program on this call too, who have done projects. Um, as Nikki alluded to, I ran this program for 12 years. So um, if I could be a resource to anyone, let me know. But um, yeah, it's just really nice to see so many people coming back to have the opportunity to lead a project. It's, um, it's very rewarding. It's great. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other, the other thing I wanted to share too, which was something that, and, and maybe it's happened in the past, but we, um, but we found this year we so we had mentors which were transitioning to call coaches um, and those are lfc grads who will work with the team the leaders on loan team to help them or guide them through the project as they need um, and and can serve as a um, connector between the leaders on loan group and the nonprofit. Um, this year one of those one of our coaches um, actually was invited and has joined the board of the organization he was working with. And one of our, um, what, no, not the coach, one of our, one of the LOL, uh, LFC people, right? Joined the board. One mm -hmm. of our LOL coaches actually went and volunteered with another project, not the one she was coaching on, but another project because she felt so connected to it after hearing about it and seeing the video and all the rest. So now she's um, helping to run programs for the, for the um, umbrella project. So anyway, I don't know if that all sounded very confusing, but <laughs> bottom line is people are connecting, they're getting involved and they're helping, you know, it's helping the, the LFC class and it's helping the nonprofits in ways that we probably didn't predict. I was gonna say, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but Bob, you just did a project this past year. Did you have anything to add? Yes, I, uh, <clears throat> thank you, Sir Lynn. Our, um, I heard the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, guidelines that you laid down, th those sound, sounded really good. That's really what we did. We kept it simple. We had a clear beginning, a clear end. We met monthly uh, in person for a couple of times. And then by Zoom, uh, they, uh, there were really two phases, two clearly defined phases to the project. That got people moving in, in uh, not got people moving, but you know what I mean, uh, in, in October and November, and there wasn't a long law before it got rolling, and that was pretty much wrapped up by January, and they were able to get into the second phase, and so it was clearly defined within the time frame as, as far as phases goes, as well as just a clear beginning and end. There was a middle point uh, that was well defined, and I think that helped too, and <clears throat> the people that, that, uh, were, that selected the project, they were just great. Um, they've all volunteered to uh, uh, to, to volunteer and to be involved in, in board work in the future. Looking forward to getting them back together um, soon and, uh, and, and going forward. Uh, it's just a real boon to your nonprofit, no matter what you need uh, to do this. Uh, I really, really recommend putting some time into it. Also, thank you for, since I'll be in the class of 2023, 20, uh, thank you for your um, pointer on on letting someone else be the contact person and person and do the the pitch which is what we'll be doing <clears throat> great oh thank you ashley ashley just put the um the link to the application in the chat box so you can grab it from there if you need <clears throat> 